Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for a virtual tour of Vulcan Park and Museum. I'm Casey and I work in the education department here. I'm so excited to have you and I hope that you enjoy this introduction to our museum which focuses on the history of the city of Birmingham and of course Vulcan himself. Today we will be learning about the civil rights movement here in Birmingham with special guest Charles Woods from the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. If you have any questions please comment below and be sure to follow us on social media for updates and info about our next episode. Thank you. My name is Charles Woods III, and I'm the Education Programs Manager at the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Due to the success of the Montgomery bus boycott, the state of Alabama filed an injunction that did not allow the NAACP to function in the state. And due to that, a man by the name of Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth decided that he did not want to lose any grounds in the civil rights movement. So he started an organization called the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights. And that organization thrust Birmingham into the modern day civil rights movement. In 1962, um, the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights was involved in what's called the Selective Buying Campaign. And that was a series of boycotts on downtown Birmingham to get them to lift their segregation ordinances and allow blacks to not only hold positions in these, in these places, but also be able to do simple things as be able to try on clothes before they bought them. In 1963, which was probably the most turbulent year of the Civil Rights Movement, with Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth being a founding member of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, he wanted Birmingham to be the focal point in the Civil Rights Movement. And to do that, he called out Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. to come out with the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. That focus became known as Project C, C standing for confrontation. And they wanted to confront the racial ordinances here in Birmingham and also confront Mr. Bull Connor, the Commissioner of Public Safety. Once King came down, he was promptly arrested and while incarcerated, he wrote his famous letter from a Birmingham jail. And while he's incarcerated, the other leaders of the movement decided to organize around the youth using cold words and um, the radio. And they would say things like, it's a party in the park. Don't forget your toothbrush. And what that meant was that it was time to come down to Kelly Ingram Park and get arrested. And that's exactly what they did. They came out in mass. And in the eight days or so, that the Children's Crusade lasted, you had over 7,000 children arrested. But the most important part of that crusade was how the Commissioner of Public Safety, Bull Connor, responded. And he responded by, by bringing out Birmingham PD and Birmingham Fire Department, and he allowed those individuals to um, allow the canine dogs to sick those children, and he also allowed those firemen to spray those children with water hoses. Now those images went to every newspaper in the nation, also the other newspapers around the world. And those images, so those children getting sick by dogs and sprayed by water hoses changed how the civil rights movement was perceived not only in the United States of America but also the world. And that ultimately led to change. And so in 1964 we had the Civil Rights Act that was finally passed, all due to a lot of what the children did here in the city of Birmingham. So ultimately through the efforts of these young people they were able to desegregate downtown Birmingham. But that did not change how the city responded to the efforts of these young people as well. So on September 15th, 1963 at 1022 AM, you had 19 sticks of dynamite go off in front of 16th Street Baptist Church. And that bombing killed four little girls. Now those four little girls being killed at 16th Street Baptist Church also changed how the civil rights movement was viewed as a whole. You should not have to die in your place of worship. And people around the world and also the United States saw those images and that blast and that gaping hole in that church. And it changed the fervor and the feelings of these people who were fighting for just equal rights and being able to function as full citizens of the United States of America. And so with the Children's Crusade in early 63, those four little girls dying in the later part of 63, and then ultimately the assassination of President Kennedy, all of those things in 63 led to the, the passing of the, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and then ultimately the Voting Rights Act of 1965 as well.
Now, if you want more information about the civil rights movement as a whole, please visit the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute and our website, which is www.bcri.org. Thank you.